Are you looking to elevate and inspire people? Are you looking to be a much more influential educational leader? Well, if that's you, you're in the right place. In today's episode, we're gonna share three strategies that will help you increase your impact as an educational leader. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes, because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Clifton Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we learn to leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further, faster in your educational leadership and your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. All right, everybody. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about educational leadership. This is something we've talked about before, but we're going to talk about it from a slightly different angle today because when I think about educational leadership and I think about how we help the next generation of leaders, how we inspire the next generation of leaders to do it better than we do it. It's how do we take and cultivate kind of those big ideas to then help you increase and enhance and leverage what you know and what you're able to do as an educational leader. So in today's episode, we're gonna talk kind of in a, in a big context, some big ideas around how important it is to increase your skills as an educational leader. So three strategies and let's dig right in. So strategy number one, as an educational leader, we have to be willing and able to embrace our authentic leadership, our authentic leadership self. What does that mean? It means that if I am an introvert and I'm not this big personality, charismatic, out front type of leader, but I'm more of a behind the scenes strategist who's thinking about the data, the evidence, the best practice, the research, just be our authentic self. Don't try to be an extrovert when you're an introvert. Because people, as you interact with them as a leader, they're looking for you to be your most authentic self. So if you like to be out front and you like to be charismatic and you like to be kind of in the front of the room, lean into that. Lean into your strengths, your talents. We talk all about Clifton strengths and your natural gifts and your natural talents. You can get more information about that in this video, but always thinking about what are the best ways that we can leverage the skills and knowledge and expertise of who we are to be our best and most, and most authentic selves. Authenticity develops and brings about people feeling trustworthy people being willing to be vulnerable, people willing to be candid. If they think you're being genuine and authentic and being your best self, they will bring the same thing to the conversation. So as we lead into this conversation around how do we increase and enhance our skills and abilities as an educational leader, I want you to think about what are the ways that you can be authentic? How can you best demonstrate putting your best foot forward and who you are and bringing that to the table to then be able to move an organization, to be able to inspire an organization. It's not just the big speech. It's not just the super big personality. Sometimes you need somebody who is a strategic thinker who can work and operate behind the scenes. We need those types of educational leaders as well. But when there's a misalignment around you're trying to be something that you're not, people many times can see that. And then also, you will be putting time and energy into something that is not naturally who you are, which means that you won't operate at your highest and best level. So think about ways and share with me in the comments below, how do you go about the work of being a leader and just being authentic, being genuine, being real, like just keep it at a hundred. Like, how do you do that? Share that with me in the comments below. And let's talk about strategy number two. Okay, educational leadership strategy number two creating and fostering an environment of collaboration. Now, one of the things that sometimes leaders get accused of is being too top down, too top heavy, too directive and not collaborative enough. And I can see how that could be a problem. We, we live in, in, a, in a world and an environment where people wanna be empowered. People wanna be included. People wanna be connected. 
when we feel connected to the organization, when we feel that we have a place where we have a space within the organization, we feel like we can invest. We feel like we can actually be vulnerable and go deeper. So how do we as leaders create an environment around collaboration and around empowerment? Well, first and foremost is being honest and thinking about the fact that we don't have all of the answers. And quite frankly, if we don't have all of the answers, excuse me, let me back up. If we have all of the answers and we can't find better or different answers throughout the organization where we lead, then we actually haven't done our jobs as leaders. We haven't built the skills. We haven't built the capacity. We haven't pressed people to grow in their skills, knowledge, and capacity. And that's actually not a knock on them. That would be a knock on us. Because one of the things our job is to do is to create this environment around collaboration and empowerment. And when we do that, then people will take risk. People will go further. People will do more. So as we think about this, how do you find throughout your organization, throughout your school site, how do you find new leaders? How do you cultivate new leaders? How do you put people in front, give them opportunities to lead projects? How do we leverage and utilize the power of a pilot program and finding a champion on your campus or within your organization to run that pilot so you build their collective capacity, you build their self-efficacy around who they are as a leader and what they might be able to add to the organization. Are you being intentional about creating space, time, and opportunity for people to be able to give, give their skills, give their knowledge, give their ideas? Because in an environment where you don't create collaboration, in an environment where you don't create empowerment, is an environment where you will create people who will just nod their heads when you tell them what to do. And if that's the environment that you want to create, then just be prepared for the environment that then you will produce, which will be an environment where all of the answers have to come through you. And that is not, in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, just one person's opinion, but in my opinion, that is not a high functioning organization. A high functioning organization can have the best answers evolve from anywhere in the organization. In our world, some of the best answers come from the middle of the organization. And I'm going to say it, but I don't mean it in this way. The bottom of the organization, the bottom of, of a school organization, unfortunately, sometimes is, is characterized as the kids, but the kids are actually at the top of the organization. Let's just be clear. But, but let's just expand on that for just a moment. The absolute best answers sometimes come from the kids. And far too often, we don't ask our scholars their opinion. And we don't give them a platform to tell, the, to tell us what they believe or what they think. We have got to get to a place where this culture of empowerment and this, this culture of collaboration happens up, down, and sideways throughout our organizations where we're asking our scholars, where we're asking our teachers, where we're asking our staff, where we're asking our families, where we're asking our district leaders and our school board and our community leaders, everybody wants to contribute. And when we create this, this place where people all come together, all for the single interest of making our school, our organization, our city, our community better, that is a high level skill that educational leaders need to have. So thinking through that, how will you or how do you create an environment of collaboration and empowerment? Not only are we gonna give you the platform to be able to talk to one another and build ideas, but we're gonna empower you to then implement those ideas. We're gonna give you a platform to go out and do that work. That's high skills, that's high level leadership, and that's leadership strategy number two. Leadership strategy number three, prioritizing strategic thinking and visionary leadership. Number one thing for leaders is don't think about the organization in terms of today. If you wanna increase your skills, your impact, and your influence as a leader, 
you have to be thinking about the organization in terms of the next 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. The issues of leading today will present themselves organically. You show up at the office and problems will be there. Challenges will be there. Operational concerns will be there. It is inherent. It's a, because the organization is a living, breathing entity that ebbs and flows and changes and gets better and gets worse. That's the natural arc and progression of things. However, if you're only living in the whirlwind of today, you are not leading at a high level. Because in order to make sure that the problems of today don't continue to fester next month, next year, and into the future, you have to be thinking about strategically what do you do and what's your vision for where the organization will be in the coming years. So you're thinking through, what are the big ideas? Where do we need to go next? What is my ideal environment? What does the, what does the perfect place, what does it look, feel, and sound like? Not today, but vision in your head. What does a high-functioning school, what does a high-functioning district, what does a high-functioning classroom, what does it look, feel, and sound like it may not be your reality today but you have in your head what it would be and as a leader think about this as a leader if you can think it as a leader you likely have the opportunity to create the conditions to move in that direction so if it looks like a place where learning is happening where staff is empowered, where staff is engaged, where staff is collaborating and talking and growing and developing and brainstorming. If it looks like a place where leaders are within the organization and they're visible and they're present, if that's what it looks like, then how do you as a leader, thinking through that long-term vision, how do you as a leader create that environment? What strategies do you put in place? What resources do you leverage? What programs do you put in place or change or create? These are all things that as we think about being visionary and strategic leaders, we can create them. But first we have to visualize, again, what does it look, feel, and sound like in your high-functioning classroom, high-functioning school, high-functioning district, high-functioning high functioning organization? When you can visualize it and then you can strategically think, what do I do the next th three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 24 months, you start to think in those terms, you can make incremental and effective and impactful change over time and start to create the environment that you best want to see. So thinking through that, share with me in the comments below, how will you be a strategic leader and what does for you your optimal or highly effective place? What does it look feel and sound like share that with us in the comments below what does it look feel and sound like for you because the reality of being a highly effective and highly impactful leader we've got to always be thinking about how do we sharpen our lens how do we get better how do we get more effective how do we get more impactful with the things that we do with the people that we empower, with the people that we lead. This is a, this is a journey that every one of us can come on. And I, I, I am so privileged and honored to be able to share in these journeys with you and hear your feedback and hear your insights in the things that you share and that you're getting value out of this endeavor, these opportunities, these conversations. And I really want these to simply be conversations. These are just thoughts and ideas that I have and I've seen throughout my time working in and around public education. But we desperately need leaders, leaders with the right mentality, the right mindsets, the right insights to help our kids go further, go faster, be whatever it is that they're dreaming and hoping and, and, and aspiring to be. So if you wanna know more about that, you can check out this video about increasing your educational leadership, leveraging your strengths. That's what we need. 
We need leaders who are on that journey. So come along with us. Check out this video right here, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.